Come on, come on, chill out. Just trying to get your attention, get some engagement. We're all having an easygoing time here. This is just an informal review of the five weeks of sessions that we've had before we move on to the midterm. So not to be silly or anything, but in the beginning, we began talking about different wants and needs because that's what marketing is all about. You can't just walk into the restaurant and say you want some food. Um, but arguably, if you did, if they could make anything you want for anybody, that would be pretty perfect, wouldn't it? But the other point was, you know, if your favorite food in the world is whatever um, and you eat it every single day, you may eventually get tired of it. So this economic theory of utility can come into play and variety seeking people may try different things over time but wow it's complicated you know even just you one person your wants and needs can change throughout the day depending on who you're with where you're at whether you're in a hurry whether you're hungry wow but we have to start somewhere <clears throat> and consumer behavior helps us with this we talked about how much marketing people focus on differentiation they use the reason to believe or sometimes unique selling proposition and yet it tends to be very easy to copy these things they tend to be very we'll say superficial you know very functional in the, the day most of these things are made from the same components which come from the same factory so how different can they be but we'll see some examples as we go of companies that continue to try to do this but it's it's really classic marketing but difficult because it's just all copied, you know. End of the day, any shampoo can wash your hair and you probably won't be able to tell the difference. We talked about the four P's, the marketing mix. We also introduced a fifth P, people. Some people talk about six P's, eight P's. It's really kind of marketing, again, blue ocean, red ocean, repackaging an idea and trying to make it sound fresh. It's the same concept, you know, product, place, price, promotion. Seasonality is kind of a strategic thinking issue because it goes beyond weather. We can talk about high season, low season, um, supply and demand, pricing, fruits. Um, we talked about gold. You know, it, it's just <clears throat> there's more out there. Payday. That's an interesting one. The marketing funnel. Very logical. If you don't have awareness, you probably won't have interest. But if you do have awareness, you may or may not have interest. Interest may or may not lead to purchase or trial. And trial may or may not lead to repeat purchase. So there's a lot of uh, uncertainty there. But it's a good starting point. At the end of um, session one, we, we try to talk about sustainability and how marketing very often tries to increase consumption. And sustainability sometimes tries to limit consumption or they say at least have some limits you know don't over consume don't get into too much debt and we're trying to get companies to think about this too I put a QR code in there from the AmCham the American Chamber of Commerce where they have awards every year for companies who did some some good work um, so again some some jargon there corporate social responsibility, trying to do good things, trying to help the community or the infrastructure, thinking long term. Where CRM, customer relationship management, basically trying to um, <clears throat> maybe tailor your product or service to the, the wants and needs of your customer. Originally, I'd say that's relationship. You get to know each other and you treat them the way they like to be treated. Um, but over time, <clears throat> this may be something they learn from your behavioral data, from data mining, from artificial intelligence, which can still be good, but sometimes it loses track of the actual underlying concept. You know, they're trying to increase your spending. CEM or CXM customer experience management. <clears throat> I found it very strange that uh, I went to Greyhound to try to get my um, birthday gift, birthday ice cream, because I have a Greyhound card and I couldn't get it because my card had expired. So I wondered why didn't they ever contact me about my card expiring? Or if they did, why didn't they follow up? Because I missed it. I mean, I used to be a really heavy Greyhound user to the point that I'd get a special gift at the end of the year for being a VIP member. And now it's like, sorry, sir, your card expired. There's no gift for you. There's no cake, no ice cream. Um, <laughs> Thanks a lot. You don't have AI. You don't have data mining. You can't see or recognize that one of your highly, you know, big spenders stopped spending or, or reduced dramatically and you just let me slip away. Wow.
that's not very professional. Over on the right, we see some rewards that could also be part of um, keeping the customer happy, you know, giving them some gifts, rewards. <clears throat> we talked about McDonald's marketing campaign about Gone in 60 Seconds, copy and pasted from the US and easy to make fun of. Maybe it's fine in Korea, in Japan, in Singapore, in countries with high, you know, kind of um, value for time, but it doesn't make a lot of sense in Thailand. So be aware, be careful of copy and paste. If you say something like food, friends, and fun, yeah, that would probably work much better. So at least an understanding of potential cultural differences before we copy and paste. After my Greyhound disaster, I was walking through central Chitlam and I saw this display for the Beverly Hills Polo Club, which has long been a copycat of Ralph Lauren and their polo. So Ralph Lauren on the lower left there has a horse, a polo player with a mallet, and that's their logo, that's their trademark. And later on, <clears throat> they have the bear up above. Also later on, they introduced this number on the sleeve, number three. Now, I don't know anything about polo, but Ralph Lauren people themselves told me that it's a skill. It's a great. And so when you're looking at a polo player, if they have a three on their sleeves, it means they're the best level, the highest level. They've achieved, you know, three out of three. And so Beverly Hills not only has a very close copy of their logo, they also started copying the number three. Shame on them. And now I was shocked to see that they've copied the bear. So on the upper center, that's the real polo bear. And there in the middle and on the right, we have this Beverly Hills Polo Club bear. Wow, that's kind of ugly. Um, <laughs> you're copying a really famous fashion brand, which in Thailand sells for three, four, five thousand baht, and here you're marking it down to a couple hundred baht. Do you think people buy by mistake? It's, it's possible. Some people might not really know fashion that well, but man, otherwise I think that's ugly. I imagine Ralph Lauren could take them to court if they really wanted to, but they probably don't bother. And I actually met the company who produces this Beverly Hills Polo Club, and they told me that they licensed it. They actually did not create this brand, but I forgot where they licensed it from. It seems like it's from another country, maybe even Italy, but uh, I forgot. Have you tried this? It's a beer made from iceberg water. <laughs> wow, sounds pretty cool. Uh, the purest source, yeah, right. I tried it. I didn't find it anything special at all. And and what if it was really special? And what if you can't find that iceberg again? <laughs> Oops. But anyway, interesting idea. I, I'd say they might have better luck if they donated money to some cause, like CSR. So marketing myopia as a concept means you differentiate so much that maybe you forget and the consumers don't care. If your competitors copy you, then you're both offering something more, which the consumers may not be willing to pay for, end of the day, you might both be earning less. Monk medical supplies, medical supplies for monks. Would that be considered niche? I'm guessing that would probably be a niche product positioning. Monks are not supposed to go shopping, so they're probably not buying this product for themselves. That means we need to get people to buy it and then donate it. Huh, which gets a bit complicated. Then how many brands are there? How many competitors? Don't know. So it becomes a fragmented market, very limited market. Might be good, I don't know. How about brand's essence of chicken? You see it advertised to young people, consume brands, it's gonna help you get a good score in the entrance exam and you can have a successful college degree from a famous university, make your family proud, get a good you know, job, woo, just from drinking brands essence of chicken. But they don't stop there, they say, hey, <clears throat> if you're not well, if you're you know, in the hospital, maybe you should take brands also as a kind of uh, supplement. Okay, so brands is good for young people, brands is good for regular people, brands is good for elderly people. Um, I'm not so sure, really. I have not seen any evidence that supports that Brands does much. It has the protein of about one chicken egg. To me, it's salty as heck, so I don't think it's that great for your health. You better drink a lot of water. But, um, but anyway, it's got a very broad positioning, and my gosh, they have huge market share, make tons of money. If you look at something more focused, maybe like the 
acai or the acacia or whatever you pronounce, you know, very high in antioxidants. Maybe it's for the health conscious, it's for the beauty conscious. But are they willing to pay a high price for it? Maybe. Niche means we position so so precisely, you know, so narrowly that other people are like, oh, that's not for me, which personally I don't like. Um, how can you grow it? How can you get more people to be interested? We talked about Philip Wayne, which sounds like a man's name, and yet it's a gym only for women. Is that a good idea? I don't know. In my opinion, no. I think people like to go and socialize. But anyway, uh, we have Dom Perignon Champagne there. So that is maybe five, seven, ten thousand baht per bottle. You're probably not going to drink it every week. Maybe you buy it and you have it for a special occasion, and maybe you only have it one time in your life. Keep the bottle. Memorize. This was my graduation from my degree from CMMU, or getting married, or don't know. But um, <clears throat> maybe difficult to grow that market. We talked about quite a few different types of segmentation, and I'm not going to go through them all, but the most common by far is demographics, and yet they don't really work well for predicting consumer behavior. And so we talked a lot about psychographics, about your interests, had a big warning about generational cohorts. It's not something we're really using in class, but just be careful not to spread this misinformation. You cannot and should not copy and paste this concept. Research needs to be conducted and understand what kinds of events people experienced between the ages of 17 to 25 because their values solidify during those ages. And one of my favorite examples is asking, who listens to classical music? And a lot of people say, oh, people. I say, really? <clears throat> I don't listen to classical music and I'm getting older. So I'm, I'm becoming nervous. You know, I just had my birthday. Is somebody going to call me up or what? I'm sorry, sir. It's time. You've become old and you have to listen to classical music. <gasps> no. The point mainly being that anybody can do anything they want. Anyone can listen to classical music. You really should not believe too much in this idea of segmentation. Sometimes it makes more sense than others. You know, cat food, cat litter, baby diapers, baby food. Yeah, okay, that, that makes more sense. <clears throat> but when you're talking about shampoo or cars, maybe less so. That old advertisement had a kind of disturbing looking girl, <clears throat> didn't it? She looked a bit, yikes. Anyway, we talked about vision and mission and our reason for being. Part of this also helps us understand who we are and why we're there and how we want to talk, how we want to look, how we want to communicate, which is part of brand consistency, which I would say is missing in an awful lot of companies. Planning is so common sense and yet also missing in a lot of companies. You take a long-term goal 
you break it into smaller pieces and it makes it a lot easier to monitor and achieve. SWOT is a tool. We really have not explored theories in our class. We're just using tools, concepts, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We talked a little bit about the product life cycle and also the BCG matrix um, from the Boston Consulting Group. So you spend a lot of time and money to develop something, then you launch it. It's a question mark. Hopefully it grows, becomes a star. Eventually it may kind of reach its peak. <clears throat> we hope it stays there for a long time, and that's a cash cow, but eventually it may start to decline and become a dog. Environmental scanning. Environmental scanning is kind of an, you know, a variation of market research where you can just observe, listen, read, pay attention to what's going on. Um, you know, from time to time, the government comes out and says, whoops, as of such and such year, all of these types of vehicles must use natural gas or news that just came out. They must be electric EVs. So all vans, all buses must become EVs by a certain year. As long as we're paying attention, it gives us more opportunity to react. Monfleur, fun to say, actually from Sahapat. Wow certified by some French company. Nice, but it's actually not from France. Oops, <laughs> but it sounds like it. Here we have Minerai. It's telling us, wow, this water came from deep, deep underground. It's so green and natural and mm, nice. Well, do you have to have a reason to believe to buy your water? Do you have to have a reason for anything? You can do whatever you want. It's your life. I joked about this heart's ease. <laughs> Water for the broken heart. Um, I have one bottle in my office if somebody's really desperate, but I don't know if it works. And how about that? It's just another bloody water. You don't have to have a reason. So maybe they're being playful. And this is a new one, fairly new. True coffee. So you think you see that and you go, coffee. Uh, no, no, no. Look on the bottom. <laughs> that's water. And they're not using plastic. So on the one hand, that's great. That's sustainable, except that lid is plastic. And on the other hand, it's also darn expensive and it's confusing. The packaging is not particularly attractive. You see the word coffee, you think it's coffee. Um, it's, I mean, other water is not packaged like that. So we, we might have a mindset that we're picking up something that's not water. Oxygen enhanced. Oh my gosh, it's got 10 times the oxygen. So then what? We can hold our breath longer because we get the oxygen from the water or what? Hmm. Now, clearly Canadian has regular water. So this would be another variation from them, which is oxygen enhanced. That one on the right is from Japan, Radical Grabber. It's got O3. Okay. Well, I don't know. Does it really help? I don't know. Over the years, I've seen a couple of different brands of water, which talk about being um, activated, activated water, which I think they need to go a long ways to ed educate people. What does activated water mean? Um, but basically, they take electromagnetic energy, so they, they, they um, treat the water, and it somehow changes the molecular structure. And they claim that this makes it antibacterial. They claim it makes it um, faster, easier to absorb molecularly. <clears throat> so you're basically saying that my regular water doesn't work well? I think I drank water all my life. It seems to work fine. Um, but they're claiming that if you drink this activated water, it somehow is better. Huh. <clears throat> it sounds interesting, but it's pretty expensive, maybe like 90 baht. So these have generally failed over the, <laughs> over the years that I've watched the market. And I met a guy <clears throat> in Korea who's a scientist, and he told me that the, um, the concept is real. The problem is that it doesn't stay activated. So if you activate the water, eventually it's going to go back to its original molecular structure. So by the time you've treated the water, you bottle the water, you've shipped the water, it's been on the shelf, you buy it, you take it home, it's just water again. He said it depends on how powerful the um, electromagnetic was for treatment in terms of how long it lasts. But basically, sorry, game over. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing left for you. But as a concept, it's interesting. 
We talked about consumer behavior. We've got uh, different types of motivations, but one is very utilitarian. I buy this because it cleans. I buy this because I want to remove the stain. I buy this because I want to soften my fabric. So I buy it for function. But you could also buy things because you enjoy it. So that could be more about the fragrance or the feel of it. You buy, we talked about things like cars or phones or tablets. Sometimes you like the look, you like the feel. Sometimes it's about the function. Sometimes it's about both, which is fine. That's where market research comes in. Because market research is going to say, okay, well, there could be multiple motivations, but they're not all equal. Now, we need to understand that there's different types of research based on different types of information and methodologies that we want to collect. So qualitative research is much better at exploring, exploring concepts, showing people something and ask them how they feel about it, or walking through a process. You know, how do you plan a vacation? How do you, how do you go about this? But when you want to get numbers and compare things, I want to know how many vacations you take. I want to know how many days. I want to know how much you spend. This becomes quantitative, which is survey research. So qualitative research typically is either depth interviews, like one-on-one, -on -one, or focus groups. Arguably observation somewhere in between, but um, observation doesn't tell you why, so it tends to be missing a lot. But you could mix the two. There's no rule against it. Back to strategic thinking, you know, you can look at a market, look at Thailand, look at Laos, look at Vietnam, look at Singapore, look at the population size, look at the age, look at the income. Is it growing or is it in decline? Look at religion. You know, do they eat pork? There are a lot of different ways that you can apply this, which is potentially interesting and useful. So I may ask you to contrast two different markets, maybe apply SWOT analysis, and this would be a kind of creative logic. Huge word, but easy concept. Disintermediation, we were saying you're kind of shortcutting the supply chain, so maybe you're skipping. In this case, we're skipping the retailer. So we bring the ice cream to you. That's an ice cream vendor. So disintermediation, um, well, e-commerce certainly makes this a lot more common. But it does create conflicts in your supply chain. Or it can, you know, if you've got people who've been selling your brand and now you go and sell it direct, of course, they're probably not going to like that. <clears throat> we talked about conspicuous consumption versus private consumption. Maybe their behavior changes. So when you consume something in public, maybe you want to look good, maybe you want to show off, but when you consume at home, maybe not. When you give a gift, you want to look good, you want it to be special. But when you consume it yourself, maybe not. STP, my gosh, the roots, the classic, the pillar, segmentation, targeting, positioning. Again, kind of creative logic. You can try to segment by geography, by age, by income, but yeah, don't know. Personally, I'd say I like the larger common denominator. Try to reach as many people as you can, but it depends. So if I'm trying to sell this you know, snake food to people who own snakes, well, that's pretty narrow. Um, if you want to, you know, I'm not saying that niche is bad. I'm just saying it has a lot of limitations. So the positioning part is really key because that's about branding and we have to be consistent. And back to the basics, you know, how can we sell more? Can we increase consumption? Maybe. Is that because we get them to knowingly, willingly consume more? Or is it because we kind of modify our product so that they consume more by accident, like by making it more watery? Either one's possible, <laughs> maybe not ethical. Can we gain new users? Well, it depends. If you're talking about shampoo, difficult. If you're talking about floor cleaner, maybe. You're talking about cold brew coffee, maybe. Can we find new use? Sometimes. I'd say that's not so easy, but when you do, you may have a good opportunity to increase your consumption and sales. We looked at the upsizing, like the big gulp, to increase consumption, and then we looked at downsizing as a kind of dubious, questionable ethics. You know, I'm satisfying your wants and needs by giving you less, but charging you the same amount, if not more. Mm, it's tricky. They're taking advantage of people by not paying attention. These are two different brands from two different companies, and they look very similar, huh? For one day and all you need. So one is from Sape and one is from Unif, and I say, totally, me too, my gosh. 
this example that I'm trying to raise about direct and indirect competition, those are probably considered direct competitors because they are fruit juice probably in the same 100% category. If they were in the 40% category, yeah, maybe. If you're really, really specific about your definitions, you might say 40% versus 40%, 100% versus 100%. But if you're not so loose about that, I said, hey, I drink Gatorade and I drink all you need. So I would argue that they are competitors as well. Aquafina makes water and here's vitamin water. Green apple flavor. Huh. Is it a direct or indirect? Again, we're really not big on definitions, but water competes with water. Water would be indirect with fruit juice. Water with vitamin water, it depends on how strict you are with your definitions. I would say water and water and vitamin water and vitamin water if you're really, really strict about your definitions. At the end of the day, I don't really care about the definition. I say, if you buy another brand instead of my brand, then we're in competition. If you consume them instead of mine, then we're in competition. The Slurpee, I said, in the U.S. went from like 32 to 48 ounces, 64, sometimes 128. My gosh, free refills, hundreds of calories, very easily making people gain weight to the point that, you know, McDonald's voluntarily reduced their sizes, you know, in terms of their upsize, pay a little bit more to get bigger French fries, bigger Coke. They were under a lot of criticism, but how else do you grow your sales? Well, there's an example. We'll look at some of this in the um, later part of our term, but here we've bundled. So if you buy two instead of one, maybe you consume more. Very, very likely that you'll consume more. If you buy six Pepsis instead of one Pepsi and you know that you have Pepsi in the fridge, you're more likely to drink it. These cans look mighty similar to my untrained eye. And yet that's why I'm taking a picture, because here we have 320 versus 330. And if anything, the 320 looks bigger because they put that gold trim on the top. Wow. They made the logo bigger. They made everything brighter, gold, premium, but you're getting less. Sorry. If you still feel thirsty, sorry. Did you ask for that? No. Did you say, I wish that you would give me a little bit less, you know, help me reduce my calories? Uh, no. So moving from 330 to 320 is downsizing. And me too, me too, me too. Lots of their competitors have followed, including Heineken. Shame on them. Okay, well, that wraps up my little review of our first five sessions of marketing. If, uh, if you are trying to review and you have any questions, just send me some emails and I'll reply. And I'll see you during the exam. If you have questions during the exam, also let me know.